Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is a very exciting video because I know how much you guys love my cost videos and I went all out. <laughs> when I saw that COS dropped their spring 2024 collection, I went through, I looked at everything. I actually went in store with my mom as well in New York and kind of checked out things in person. And honestly, I think personally, these are some of the best pieces from all of their new arrivals. So the goal for this video is to really highlight A, what I think are the best pieces, B, now that I have them in person and I've tried them on, I wanna talk through things that I either really like about them or don't like about them, so that maybe as you're looking through and if you're a big fan of costs or just overall just minimalistic modern dressing, if that's kind of your aesthetic, then hopefully this will be helpful if you're looking to pick up some new items or just looking for general kind of outfit inspiration. So since I'm already wearing this dress, let's start with the dresses, which I think is a really great staple for spring and summer. You really can't go wrong with the dress. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. I will go through each of the items, what they cost, how they fit, and then I will actually kind of talk about how I styled them as well. This dress was actually the dress that really caught my eye from the whole collection. I think it's unique. I haven't really seen anything like it in a long time. Let me just pull up the sizing information about it. So I bought it in a size extra small, which I do think is the perfect size. In general, I usually get things in an extra small or like a size two at cost. And it was $135. So again, I think a pretty decent price point for... It is a t-shirt dress, but it's a t-shirt on the top, and then it's got this really pretty fabric at the bottom. Doubt it's silk, just given the price point, but it is a nice, cute little fabric. Very flowy, very breezy. I love that about it, so that was really great for me. I also loved the color. It's a little bit of a cooler. It's interesting because the skirt is a little bit warmer in my opinion, but this is like a cool kind of stone neutral color. I don't really have anything like it, especially in a dress form, but definitely not in a t-shirt dress form. Pretty much all my dresses that are t-shirt dresses are black, so I thought this was kind of a nice little contrast for spring. I don't think sweat would show through it like a gray, and it is a nice kind of thicker material, t-shirt type material, and I do like where the sleeves hit. I think in general this is very flattering instead of being like a shorter kind of crop sleeve. So in general, I love how this dress feels. <laughs> However, I do think this is one of those dresses where I need to watch the video back because I don't know how flattering it's going to be for my body type just because it does cut off a little bit under the bum. So it's sort of like a, how do I describe this? I have a very long torso, so it's already sort of accentuating the long torso and I have very short legs. So I'm just wondering if it's gonna make me just highlight the fact that I have short legs and a long torso because that's sort of how the dress is cut. I normally look really bad in dropped waist things. So this is gonna be one of those where like, I feel great honestly wearing it. I think it's very pretty. I love the shape, how it kind of like nips in the waist. I think all of this is very flattering, but I just have a very bad feeling that when I go back and look at the video that it might not be the most flattering on me personally. But in general, I will say this is one of my favorite dresses of the season that Koss has brought out. As for the styling of this dress, in fact, actually with all the dresses that I am about to show you, what I like to do with dresses is have an option for styling them down and then also have an option for styling them up. So the way that I style them down is with more casual sandals. So maybe an open toe, dare I say, one second. These are my current favorites. These are some new ones from St. Agni, who's an Australian brand that I'm just very fond of. I think I'm actually gonna do a whole video on sort of minimal sandals for spring and summer because I have actually a couple of good pairs that I've been building out my collection with over the last couple of months preparing for summer. And so yeah, I just think these are cool, asymmetrical. They're extremely lightweight. They're real leather. They're very, very, very comfortable. So they're kind of just like that perfect, easy, modern, slip on little sandal. So I loved wearing this to sort of dress it down with a new purse from Koss. 
which I purchased this actually outside of this <laughs> sort of collection and I kept it. So that's why the tags are not on it. And I've already worn it a few times and I really, really like it. It's sort of just an easy, casual, I think stylistically it's sort of based off of the Loewe Flamingo bag and just because of the little side ties and whatnot. But I just love that it's basically just a simple little leather pouch. Very minimal, very casual, can fit your phone, can fit your wallet, can fit just like all the little bits that you need. Nothing too crazy, nothing too big. But yeah, I just thought together this outfit is super cute and I really like the contrast of the black against this lighter, more neutral stone color. So then in terms of dressing it up, for example, something that I would wear into the office or out to dinner with friends, love a closed toed shoe, really don't love wearing anything open toe into the office. I don't want to say that I never have because I probably have before and I don't want to eat my words, but I just try to avoid it at all costs. I think it's weird. I don't want to see my coworkers toes and they don't need to see mine. So this is a shoe that I've really been loving. It's from H&M. Knock on wood, they still have it and it's $25 or something. It's incredible. It's a great rainy day shoe in New York because it's plastic. It's not real leather, which I never thought that would actually be a good thing, but it actually is in terms of my shoe not getting ruined when it's raining. But I just think it's a really chic shape. Koss also has all leather ones that look exactly like the ones from Totem. So I will leave all of those linked below. If you want the Totem ones, they're sort of, not sort of, they are the highest price point ones. They're around six or $700, I think. The cost ones are about 200 and then these are 25. So lots of good options. I think the pointy toe is just super chic and just kind of adds a little more formality to an outfit when you are wanting to look a little bit nicer and a little bit more put together. This is a bag that you will also see styled throughout this video. And it might look familiar to you because <laughs> It's the giant version of my favorite bag of all time, which is the flattered Hedda bag. And they came out with this gigantic size. It can fit, I think, a 13 inch MacBook Pro inside of it. So it could totally be a work bag. I, yeah, I'm still getting used to the size. I'm not gonna lie, just because when you are used to carrying around little bags, reaching for a giant bag, I just don't have that much stuff to put in it, to be perfectly honest. Even though it is nice if I wanna take my jacket off, I can like shove it in there. So still getting used to the bigger bag trend, but this is something that I'm trying out and it still is a very relatable price point. It's expensive, it is real leather. This was around $400, I believe, but I'd rather experiment with a bag like this in a bigger size than buy like a 35 Hermes Kelly that I might not end up wearing. So that's my logic, <laughs> I'm sticking to it. So yeah, styling this bag up because it is a little more formal. The bigger size just kind of reminds me, it's giving me like briefcase energy. Not that I think it looks like a briefcase, but for some reason the larger size just feels a little bit more like a briefcase, but that's not a bad thing in this case, no pun intended, because I do think it dresses up the outfit and elevates the outfit a little bit, so. That's how I'm styling this particular dress. And now let's dive into the next one. This next dress is actually a dress that my mom drew my attention to because she really liked it. And when I saw it, I really liked it because it is made out of my absolute favorite linen from Koss. Favorite color of linen, favorite linen. Ugh, Koss linen is just like 10 out of 10, which actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I thought I ordered a black linen shirt from Koss and I've not seen it, mm. excuse me, but they either left it out or I forgot to order it. So, but it's okay because I've already showed you my Koss linen shirts from last year. I will leave those videos linked above and below. Love them. They have a black one that I'm all over for this year. I love the darker color of linen. They're a lot more realistic for the city because let's be honest, when I'm walking around in the summer in the city, I'm not on vacation. I'm not in white linen vacation vibes and the city is dirty. So it's a lot more practical to have a darker color linen in my opinion. Also doesn't show sweat at all, which is fantastic. So I love this navy color. I wore this shirt nonstop last summer. So the fact that they made this in a shirt dress is 
phenomenal. They also style it kind of funky on the website, but I kind of love it. And I didn't style it this way here, but they put jeans underneath of it. And then because it does button from head to toe, they unbuttoned it here and then just kind of had it like open. And I thought that was super chic. So I might play around with styling it like that in the future as well. But I just thought this was really, really nice basic for summer. There's nothing overly special about it, but it is, I know because of the fact I wore that shirt so much last summer, it's just one of those things that you're going to wear over and over and over again. And cost quality is so great that it's perfect to get something like this from them because it's just going to wear really well. I also love where the sleeve hits. Again, I think that's really flattering that it's not a really short sleeve or a long sleeve because to be perfectly honest, I roll the sleeves of my long sleeve linen shirt up anyway <laughs> to kind of have this bit of a cropped look and feel. So the fact that they cropped it for me, already great. I also love the length of it, that it's like a midi length. I think that's really flattering length as well. And so similar to the last dress, I styled it in the exact same way in terms of like dressing it up and down where to dress it up. I've put it with those pointy shoes from H&M as well as that really large bag from Flattered. This is 100% something again, like the other one. If, in fact, even more with this one I'd wear to work just because it's a shirt dress. You really can't go wrong with that. And then... Another way I can style this, and this is something I love about navy, is I love styling it with black because I find that to be a little irre irreverent, kind of, I guess. I don't know why. I think because black and navy, not mixing them was such a thing for so long, but I think black and navy look fantastic together, especially a really deep, dark navy like this. But of course it's navy, so it also looks really good with tan. So I did mix it with my Margot heels and my little flattered handbag. And then I've also paired it with another handbag, <laughs> which I will discuss right now after I talk about price and sizing for a second. So this I got in a size two as well, and it was $135, which for a 100% linen garment, that's a very thick really well-made linen. I think that's a great price, again, for a dress. So yeah, I feel good about that. <laughs> and let me now show you this purse because I have very mixed feelings about it and I would love to hear what you all think. So this is what they call the like raffia, how do you say that? Raffia? Raffia? Raffia wristlet. It comes in one size and it's $69. So when I saw this, I, I don't know why. I just thought it's cute. It's different. It's not really trying to look like a Bottega bag or a Loewe bag, like Casa's doing a little bit with some of their bags. They're doing a lot of like heavily inspired by stuff. And this one, maybe I just missed it, but I haven't really seen a bag look quite like this. I thought it was fun, a very nice, just like cute, sweet little, like going out at night in the summer kind of bag. And then I got it in person and I just find the quality to be very subpar. It's very, very, I mean, maybe that's a pro, right? It's super lightweight. So you could certainly carry it all the time, but if you just look at it, I just don't know why in the world this would be $70 and I don't think it's worth that. And I actually think it's a little hard to wear and a little hard to style just because you truly do just hold on to it with your wrist. And I just don't know how realistic that is to just kind of like have this dangling on your side. I don't know. <laughs> It's just a little weird and I just don't think it's that practical and for how just not sturdy it feels and very how lightweight it is. I'm like, I just feel like this co costs like a dollar to make and they're charging $70 for it. So I don't know if it was like thicker and just different or maybe lined. I, there's just so many different ways I, in my head, I guess this bag could have gone and I just don't think it's worth it personally. My other bag, which I showed you before, this little guy, I do think is very well made and it is real leather and it is lined. Like the craftsmanship is like night and day on this one. So that's why I kept this one and that's why I will be returning the other. But if you don't care and you just think it's cute and sweet because aesthetically, you know, it is, then this could be a fun little summer bag for you. 
So this next dress was quite a surprise. This was one that I saw in store when I was with my mom, and I really loved the look of it. I mean, what's not to love? It's high neck, it's sleeveless, it's got a really pretty kind of, what they say, a knitted linen maxing dress. So I guess there's linen in this, which is interesting. I got it in a size extra small, and this one was a higher price point. This was $170. So most of the dresses I've showed you before this were $135. Yeah, $135 across the board. So this one is $40 plus more. And this one, the quality is what really killed it for me. I think the silhouette is pretty. Again, I love that maxi length to it. I think that's really nice, but it's see-through. It is see-through. I am wearing a light gray bra and Uniqlo tan underwear, and you can see them through the dress. So again, they should have lined this, especially for being more expensive than the other dresses. I feel like this is actually worse quality, which was unfortunate. So aesthetically, again, I think it's very nice. Again, I styled it in the exact same way, <laughs> dressing it up and then dressing it down. I do love, of course, again, pairing black with colors like cream. I don't think it always has to be like light and bright and airy. So again, aesthetically, I really like this outfit. I thought it was super cute. Again, it would be a really nice work outfit. Maybe if you wanted to just put a slip underneath of it and you're not bothered by the fact that it is a higher price point and it is a little see-through, but I do just want to call that out because I just think that's crazy and a bit bizarre that... Yeah, it's a little unlike costs, I will say. Their stuff usually is made better than this. So that's kind of like two back-to-back -back fails, which is a bit strange, but yeah, just wanted to call that out in case you saw it on the website and you thought it was cute. I thought it was cute too. And then yeah, a little too see-through for me personally, but so this one will be going back for sure. And the raffia bag will be going back. Which one should I do next? Let's go into pants or tops. I'm gonna go into pants because I have a really interesting top and I think I'm gonna do that one at the very end because it's kind of wild and it's a little bit out there and it's a little bit cray cray. So let's wait till the end for that one. Next. This is gonna be a little bit of a challenge to hold the mic and hold the pants. I'm not gonna put the pants on because then you wouldn't really be able to see them. So you'll see them in the cutaways. But what really drew me to these pants actually wasn't even the pants, I'm not gonna lie. They came styled with a blazer, a matching denim blazer, which I don't think has come out yet. I, I definitely didn't come out when I was placing this order, which is why I did not get the matching blazer to try it on with it. But I did just wanna call that out because I think this would be a really fun, casual suit. The other thing I loved about it, which is also on the blazer, is the detailing. So it's got this really nice brown, almost kind of 70s piping. And then of course, the bottom of the pants, it has these like turned up details. So like it's very, I thought it would be stiffer denim to be honest, like my last pair of column jeans from Koss that I really love, but they're actually a lot softer. They're a little more casual and you can't fold them down. So the stitching is exactly where it is. <laughs> they're not going to be longer. You can't make them longer or shorter. They just kind of are what they are. I got these in a size two, which I will say they fit really, really well. I've had issues with costs in the past where if I get a size two, sometimes the pants are too short. These were not too short. I mean, I definitely can only wear them with flats, but I still think they were a nice length. So if you're a little worried about length, also for reference, I'm five, seven, but I do have short legs. So <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. But yeah, size two worked really well for me. Price point, one second. Uh, these were $150, which is on par. I feel like costs, they always like make their dresses the same price, $130, $135. And then their pants, they always make $150, which is kind of interesting because my favorite pants from Cost are my, other than my jeans, of course, are these wool trousers. Love, love, love. I will leave them linked below. Like if you only bought one thing from Cost, it would be, it should be these trousers. They're my favorite thing ever. But they're $150 for 100% wool. So again, the fact that this is denim, I mean, I guess it's just the game that we all play. Like denim is always marked up. But yes, these, I think I was hoping the denim would be a little bit stiffer, but they are very comfortable. So if you're not looking for that super rigid, stiff look, like they're still really nice pants. I just have softer 
similar denim already in my spring wardrobe that I will be getting out of storage soon. So these would be a bit redundant for me, but it would be really cool with the whole look, with the suit. I've paired it again with those pointy shoes as well as with this top that I will dive into for a second because I love, 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 love this top. And this was another thing that I actually didn't notice online because it just didn't really stand out and it stood out to me in the store because the material. So yeah, let's talk about the top. So again, this top was underwhelming online, right? It's just a black top, which I completely understand. So I'm hoping to do it justice for you all now because I love this top. I saw it in the store. I felt the fabric and I was just like, oh my gosh, I love this shirt. So this is a 100% merino wool top. And it's in my, fa again, my favorite cut. I love it when the sleeves come to this length. I have a top from Zara that's knitted like this. That's again, probably polyester or something. And I wear it all the time. It's thicker, it's knitted, it looks really expensive. So I love that this one's 100% wool because even though you might think wool, hot, like summer, why are, what are you doing? <laughs> it breathes really well. Having natural fibers like this, they breathe so well. And this is very sheer. I hope you can see that a little bit, but it's like the perfect kind of sheer because it's not sheer wear. I feel the need to wear a tank top or something underneath. I can just wear, I mean, I'm sure if I wore a black bra, it would be a bit too much to wear to work or something, but wearing nude undergarments underneath of it, you cannot see anything. It's not nearly as sheer as the cos wool fitted shirts that I have that I love that I wear more as like base layers that I've talked about in previous videos. I just think this is the most luxurious feeling top and it's got really beautiful thick sort of ribbing at the bottom so it just sits really well on the hips so you can either kind of tuck it in to your pants or you can leave it out for a more casual vibe which I've done with the jeans so you kind of get a feel for that but I just love this top. I know this again, kind of like the linen shirt. It's going to be just such a staple for me this spring and summer that things like this are just kind of a no brainer at this point in my wardrobe. And I know that it's worth investing in. It was a little pricey because it is 100% merino wool. This was a $90 top and I got it in a size extra small. And I think the fit is perfect. It's what I love about cost. It's like a little bit oversized, but still fits really beautifully in the shoulders, I think. So yeah, huge, huge fan of this top. I think it's really, really cute, insane quality. And yeah, definitely will be keeping this one for sure. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, I kind of messed this one up. <laughs> the next two things and the final two things of this, uh, the collection overview are definitely wild cards. So I understand that, but what is fashion without taking a little risk? You guys know that I, I always have mixed reviews on things like this, which is why, of course, why not buy it again <laughs> and see? This is very similar to one of the jackets that I highlighted in my cropped trench coat video, which I will leave linked above and below. Koss had a kind of tan version of this. You can hear it, it's like a similar nylon material. And the reason I was really drawn to this one is because I have these, they call them utility pants, but I, I have them, they're like nylon pants and I love these pants, I wear them all the time. And I love that this was kind of matching. And I just think it's like super cool to pair these two together. So that was the vision that I had in my mind. <laughs> I will say styling it in the cutaways, I definitely messed up on the, I went and looked again online to see how they did it because it's a bit strange. It's got this scarf detailing and this is how they style it. Even though I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to hide myself up, but I prefer actually how I styled it where you just leave it kind of down in the front. I think that little piece looks really cool. So it is meant to have this sort of scarf detailing that then you see tucks into this little piece here. And then it goes down in the back and it's just meant to kind of cut off and you just have like one collar sticking out in the front, which is interesting. I would say. So yeah, I definitely think this is more, a more alternative, edgy, fashion forward piece, but I love it with these pants. I think they're so cool. For practicality purposes, I'm not gonna keep it because I just don't, it's not something I'm gonna wear over and over and over again in my wardrobe and I just don't really have space or 
yeah, it's just not practical for me at this point in my life to just buy things that are only cool in this sort of one capacity. I need things with a little more versatility in my wardrobe, but I did want to call it out because I think it's super, super, super cool <laughs> paired together with these pants. And I just wanted to call these pants out again because I love these pants so very much. And I also have it without a shirt underneath of it, which in the front, it looks super cool, but the back is kind of like pleated and comes up super high. So it's not really that realistic, I will say, but I would probably wear it with like a crop tank top because I do really like the fact that you kind of see that crop stomach situation on it. Uh, the other thing about this too, is that it's a one size fits all, which costs does that. And they especially do it with these like really huge kind of capey weird tops. And I kind of hate that because then you have more fabric than you would really need, which then, I don't know, makes for some fit issues. But in general, this one was $135. So very similar to that tan cropped one that I had in my trench coat video similar price point, but I do think it's really cool. I think it's very edgy and very different. So I'm glad I got it. I'm glad I tried it on because the vision was there and it, it was very much just like I had it in my head. It gave in person as well. So it's a cool, it's a cool little piece. If you want to like add something edgy to your spring, summer wardrobe and it's super lightweight as well, just like the pants, even though I will say wearing both of these together would probably be quite noisy. <laughs> so remember that. So this top is definitely the wild card of the whole thing. But again, what is fashion without a little fun? This was too interesting of a piece to not at least explore. And so I did pick it up right off the bat. Again, this isn't a one size fits all, but it's kind of close. It's two sizes. It comes in extra small, small, and then medium, large right off the bat, I do wish they would have just invested in making four sizes at least, because as you can see, I do think it's part of the style to be a little more just draping on the body, but this is like to an extent that just looks a little silly in my opinion on me personally. And so, yeah, it would have been nicer if it was just brought in a little bit more, even just for, you know, security purposes. This is definitely not a top to wear if you have a large bust in any way, shape or form. I do not. So I did not have to worry about that. Also from a price point perspective, it is $250. So because it's fully real leather, definitely is an investment piece. But again, I thought it was interesting. I wanted to try it. So I'll first show it to you on its own. I paired it with my little utility pants and I actually think it looks really, really cool. Again, aside from, you know, fit issues, but I think it's very interesting. It's very sexy, but really like modern still, which is like always a fun, fun little mix. And so, yeah, I thought it paired really nicely with black pants. It would look good with jeans. It would look good with trousers. Um, I always like to juxtapose sort of if something's overtly sexy, having like a big wide leg trouser, wool trouser with this, I think would look really cool or like these parachute pants, which are kind of oversized. So that's the only thing I'd recommend. Like I wouldn't pair this with leather leggings unless you're trying to look like Catwoman or something for Halloween or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's just personally how I would style it. And I'm not going to lie. When I picked this out, I originally saw in my mind wearing it with a white button up shirt. And I will show you how big of a fail that was. I don't think it looks good. I think just from a fit perspective, the collar just like sticks out awkwardly and it bunches awkwardly. And I don't mind the back of it, how it kind of just comes out like that. But I just think it looks it just didn't look as cool or effortless or interesting as I thought it was going to. And so, yeah, I mean, be kind, of course, but let me know in the comments below. It's, I just, I don't think it works personally. I wouldn't recommend, but this was how I originally thought I was going to wear this. So then I thought to myself, okay, maybe I'll wear it with my Koss merino wool tight fitting sort of base layer top. <laughs> Maybe it's got to be a turtleneck. I don't know, because there's an awkward gap here that you might notice. And I didn't think that it looked good with that either. <laughs> and so I was really struggling to style this. And I just, maybe it'd be interesting over a coat or so. I, I don't even, I don't really know. I don't know. It didn't work. I think, to be honest, it's probably better just left on its own. 
But then again, of course, that gets into weird territory, kind of in the same way that cashmere tank tops do, where they're very warm, but the cut of it's for for hotter weather. So you're going to sweat in it. I don't know. So I'm just going to leave it at that. This is really not a win for me, but I do think it's super interesting. And again, I thought one of the more interesting pieces in the collection that I wanted to highlight to you guys. So the vision doesn't always work out sometimes, but uh, yeah, thought, thought that might be a fun one and it wasn't quite there. But in general, I hope this video was helpful. I know it's really hard with costs. A lot of things you need to try on, in my opinion, because they have these really like modern, exaggerated, oversized fits in a lot of their garments. And cost is just not in a lot of cities, especially in the United States. And maybe you don't want to, you know, it's, it's pretty wasteful to order things and just to try stuff on. Uh, I know that I'm doing that, but I'm doing that hoping that maybe I can show you all and maybe you can make better decisions before you order kind of based off this video. That's my intent at least. And yeah, hope this was helpful. And let me know if you've gotten anything interesting from Koss recently. It's really one of my favorite places to shop. And yeah, let me know in the comments below and I will see you all in my next video.